we're able to make some calculation of the risk, which shows that if we invest in different countries, we can have a lower risk, okay? Because the markets are not correlated. One country's market might be going down and the other is going up. So if we invest in the two countries, we're lowering our risk, okay? This equation is the equation which uh, can explain that, okay? Show that in the numbers. So we did this example with the US and Japan, okay? So, then let's look at the case, some case study uh, about the cost of capital. Do you understand cost of capital? What is involved in the cost of capital we mentioned in the last time? Cost of debt and cost of equity, okay? So cost of equity is involved in the cost of capital for a company. So how much does it cost a company to get their money? Let's say they need to pay 10% to the bank, okay? As a loan, okay? The same, 10% to bond investors. That is the debt, right? Then is the equity going to be more expensive or less expensive? How much do I need to pay to my investors? Pay to the owners? And what percent? If I'm paying 10% to the bank for the loan, am I going to need to pay more or less to the owners? More, right? So I'm going to pay 15% to the owners. Why is it more? Who is taking more risk, the bank or the owners? Owners are taking more risk, right? Bank is just giving me a loan, okay? If I don't pay back the loan, they'll get my land, they'll get my factory, they'll get something back, okay? The owners are taking a bigger risk. Why if the company doesn't go well? Okay, the price of their ownership goes down, they could be left with nothing. The company goes bankrupt, they get nothing, okay? They have to sell all the things to pay back the bank loan, okay? So this is a higher risk. So equity costs more. So today we're going to talk about what, how can the company reduce its cost of capital? Does the company want to pay 15% to the owners or 10% to the owners? Wants to pay a lower number, right? Wants to pay a lower number to the bank and a lower number here. So the question is, how can the company reduce the cost of capital? Because we are going to use the cost of capital to make investment decisions, right? If we, get a, if we have this cost of capital, and we have a project which pays us 9%. We invest in a project and we expect to get a 9% profit this year. Are we going to invest in the project? No. No, we're not, right? It's less than what it costs us to get the money. Okay? So we're not going to invest. So we want to have a low cost of capital for the company. Then we can invest in more projects. Okay? Do you understand the idea of cost of capital? Yes. Cost it costs to the company to, to get the money, okay? So, <clears throat> the firm's cost of capital can depend on which investors, domestic or foreign supply capital, okay? So who do you think is going to accept the lower pay, payoff? The domestic investor or the foreign investor? Foreign investor, why? We can pay 15% to our domestic owners. <coughs> Let's say we pay 12% to foreign owners. Why are the foreign owners prepared to accept a lower percent than the domestic owners? No, not the currency, right? We just talked about it in the last class. What did we talk about in the last class? This, for, this domestic owner, they invest all their money in Korea. Okay? They're investing all their money in Korea. Right? Foreign owner or just diversified owner invests their money all over the world. Or say invest money in US. It's a US investor. So the US investor is investing all their money in the US. And now this is a Korean company. Right? So 
or you'll have a Korean owner. So a domestic owner is a Korean owner. Okay? So why would the US investor be prepared to accept a lower price than a Korean investor? We discussed in the last class. <clears throat> Whose risk is higher? Or is the risk the same for the US investor or the Korean investor? The domestic investor has more risk. Why? Why is this a risk riskier investment for the domestic investor? They're not diversified. They've already invested all their money in Korea. And now they invested in another Korean company. What happens if the Korean economy goes bad? They lose all their money. Right? Yes. What about the US investor? They invest all their money in the US stock market. Okay? US stock market, let's say, is not correlated with the Korean one. Not correlated. Okay? Then what happens? When the US market goes bad, maybe the Korean market will go up. When the Korean market goes bad, maybe the US market will go up. Okay? So this investment is not as risky for the foreign investor. Why? Right? Korean market goes down, this person loses all their money. Does this person lose all their money? No, they already invest most of their money in the US, so they just use a small part of their money. Okay? So because it's not as risky for the US investor, they will accept a lower return. Do you understand? Risk and return is linked together. High risk, high return. Okay? So lower risk, I accept lower return. <clears throat> so therefore, the company can get an advantage by selling equity to foreign investors. Okay? Because the foreign investor can pay a lower price. So the implication is that a firm can reduce its cost of capital by internationalizing, internationalizing its ownership structure, getting more owners from abroad who will <coughs> ask me for a lower return. So let's look at an example of Nestle. These days, China has this situation, but in Switzerland they had this situation in 1998. Do you know Nestle? Yes. What Nestle products do you buy? Nesquik. Nesquik? What's that? It's the powder in the milk, mixed up milk. Do you still drink that kind of drink? <laughs> Does your mother make it every night? <laughs> your mother puts you in the bed and puts it in the bed. That's okay. Don't get embarrassed. It's okay to drink tonight. What about you guys? What Nestle products do you buy? Chocolate? Kit Kat? Ah, hmm? Nestle makes a lot of different products, right? So Nestle, do you want to invest in Nestle? Yes. Do you think it, and Nestle could be a good investment? Yes. Do you think Nestle will go bankrupt anytime soon? Yes. No? Maybe in 10 years its price could be higher? Yes. Relatively safe investment? Nestle, is it diversified or not diversified company? Diversified. Is it investing in just one country or is it investing in a lot of countries in the world? A lot of countries. So Nestle is a global company, so it should be quite diversified. So it should be quite a safe investment, right? We should get some return. So people want to invest in Nestle. Okay? Maybe you want to invest in Nestle too. So Nestle is, it was listed on the Swiss stock market because it's a Swiss company. But it had two types of stock, bearer shares and registered shares. Foreigners were allowed to buy the bearer shares, and Swiss citizens could buy registered shares. So we have a similar situation for China these days, Chinese companies. Foreigners can buy called a share in Hong Kong for the bank in China, right? But Chinese people can buy the shares in Shanghai, right? Only Chinese people. Uh, so the bearer shares were more expensive, okay? So in 1998, November, Nestle lifted the restrictions imposed on the foreigners, allowing them to hold registered shares as well as bearer shares. So before the market was divided, and then we, we lifted the restrictions. So here, the bearer share was about $8, $8 for the foreigner. And it was just $4 for the Swiss person. Okay. The 
stock price. Okay, so who wants the stock more? Swiss people or foreigners? Foreigners. Foreigners want the stock more. Why? They want diversification. They want diversification, right? What about the Swiss investor? Don't want the stock as much. Why? They already own a lot of Swiss stock. Okay? <clears throat> They already own a lot. They already own much Swiss investments, so they're not attract. They don't think this is a good, attractive stock for them to invest in. Like we just talked, they're not diversifying. Okay, but the foreigners like it because they are diversifying. So when the market was separate, the price was higher for the foreigners because they want. If there's more demand, we have a higher price. Then we can see here that when November the 18th, Nestle lifted the restriction so these two can come together, anybody can buy the stock, then of course the stock price comes level in the middle. Okay. So the point that we're trying to make is that the blue line before is here, but now it's here. So by allowing the foreigners to enter the market properly, we get a better price for our stock. Okay. So uh, by it went from four to six. Okay. So by allowing foreigners to buy the stock on the Swiss stock market properly, right? What happened? The stock price went up. Okay. So, the Swiss company's cost of capital is going down. So, what happened was we had a big transfer of wealth from the foreign shareholders to the Swiss shareholders. Okay, the foreign shareholders, their stock price went down to six. Okay, the Swiss shareholders, their stock price went up to six. So they're happy, they're not so happy. Okay. Uh, the price of the foreign shares declined by 25% from 8 to 6, and the price of the registered shares rose from 4 to 6, 33%. So because this was the main part of the market capitalization, the total value of Nestle increased when it internationalized its ownership structure. So by allowing the foreigners to own the stock, the value of Nestle went up a lot. So, therefore, Nestle's cost of capital declined. So our value went up, and compared to the profits we need to pay back. So our cost of capital is lower. So, uh, <coughs> for, we're going to talk about country risk in a minute, but uh, there was some even though Swiss is not, Switzerland is a very safe country, right? These guys were a victim of political risk. Okay? Do you understand? Yes. They lost their money overnight because they made some sudden decision to change the system. Okay? In Switzerland. Uh, just recently, Switzerland also made some decision to change their currency exchange regime suddenly. So even in a very safe country like Switzerland, we can still have some political risk, right? Government changed the law, now the foreigners can buy the stock on the Swiss stock market, change the law suddenly, you lost your money. Okay? And also we learned here uh, that we should consider the market imperfection. This is a market imperfection, the same share, right, but different price. The problem of political risk and the main point we're looking at here, the benefit to the company of internationalizing its ownership structure. Okay, so if we internationalize our ownership, do you understand to internationalize ownership? Yes. Let, sell our stocks to the foreigners, then we can get what benefit? Lower cost, higher stock price, and lower cost of capital. Okay. So discuss with your partner about the example of Nestle. So discuss with your partner what happened with Nestle. We explained on the board. So explain to your partner.
What did they do to change? What happened in the stock price system, in the stock market system? What change was there? Sorry, I'm not sure. Can anybody say what change did they make in the stock market? Integration. Integration of what? were allowed to buy the stock, the same as the Swiss people, okay? the registered shares. Okay? So it was divided, the foreigners were only allowed to buy this special stock, not allowed to buy the reg normal stock of Nestle, right? Yes. So they made it that the foreigners can also buy the normal stock too, yes. okay? no difference. So you said the stock price went up and the cost of capital went down, right? Why? Why did uh, the stock price go up and cost of capital go down? Because of the average of stock prices goes up about the 35%. Yes, but why? Because the quantity of the stock just goes up. No? Can anybody tell me? Yes? More people want to buy the stocks. <laughs> no, now foreigners can buy the stocks. I guess. Yes. That's why more people want to buy mm, <coughs> Not really. Yes? It's easy to access their business. It's easier to access, yes. But why, do, why will foreigners pay more than Swiss people? Oh, they have many people in work. So they want 
they want diversification. Diversification benefit, right? Yes. Do Swiss people get a diversification benefit by investing in Nestle? No. Do foreigners get a diversification benefit by investing in Nestle? Yes. Yes, right? That's why the foreigners are able to pay more money, or are going to pay more money for the stock. Okay? We looked at in the last class this diversification benefit, right? The uh, <coughs> this equation. So if we put here the cross correlation of of uh, Switzerland and the US, okay? That's not a one. The score is not one. This is going to be less than one. So by investing in the Swiss stock and the US stock, in the end, it's going, the risk is going to be lower than just investing in the US stock or just investing in the, U, in the Swiss stock. If the risk is lower, for me, I'm prepared to high, pay a higher price. Okay? So you're a Korean investor, okay? And you want to invest in the Irish stock market in a company in Ireland, but 90% of your money is invested in Korea. Korean stock market, you own a house in Korea, okay? You invest your money in the Korean stock market. And I'm an Irish investor. I'm, I own 90% of Irish stock and I have a house in Ireland. Okay, and we are both buying the stock in the Irish company. Who's going to pay a higher price for the stock in the Irish company, me or you? You're going to pay a higher price, why? So, you get a diversification benefit, so the investment is less what? Less risk. Right, your, do you understand portfolio? Yes. Your portfolio is less risky overall. Portfolio means, investment portfolio means I invest in here and here and here and here, right? So if I invest in Ireland, I'm a Korean investor, I'm lowering the risk in my portfolio because of this equation, okay? Okay? This is expected portfolio return. I'm lowering the risk in my portfolio. If I'm an Irish investor, I'm in just keeping the risk the same in my portfolio. No difference. Anyway, I'm investing in Ireland. Okay? So because you're lowering your risk as a Korean investor, you are going to pay a higher price than I will. Okay? So that's what happened. We can see the evidence with Nestle. Okay? When Nestle allows the foreigners to buy, the share, the foreigners are prepared to pay a higher price. We can see that before, when we had a special share only for foreigners, right? That's a much higher price than this share. Same share, but only for Swiss people. Okay? So a similar situation in China these days. If you go to the Hong Kong stock market, foreigners will pay a higher price for the same share okay? than Chinese people pay in Shanghai. Because it's only for foreigners. So, when we look at this, we can see that companies can take advantage of this. Nestle can take advantage by selling their stock to foreigners, right? So it means that comp if companies sell their stock, if I'm Samsung and I sell my stock in New York, I can get a higher stock price than just selling to Korean people. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? We need to understand this idea that by diversifying, I thought we understood the idea, diversification reduced the risk. Do we understand that idea? Yes. If I go around the India to go to Africa, or if I go through the ocean to go to Africa, it's diversifying my risk. People understood that 500 years ago, right? They used to send a ship the different way. Okay, why? One ship gets stored, breaks, finished, right? Yes. But if I send two ships two different ways, at least one gets a storm, at least I only lose 50%. Okay? So it's the same for investing in the stocks. I invest everything in Korea, there's a storm, I lose everything. I invest half in Korea, half in Switzerland, I only lose half. So my risk is lower. Okay? So I'm going to want to buy the Switzerland stock more than the Korean person wants to buy, or sorry, more than the Swiss person wants to buy the Swiss stock, okay? as a foreigner. So that's all that this is saying. Okay. Do you have any other question about this before we move on? About the case of Nestle? Would we know the country's risk and we invest another person? 
Yes. <coughs> we don't want to invest all our money in our, in our own country, or in just one country. We want to invest across different countries. But usually, investors have a bias. So usually, Korean investors invest in the Kospi, or in Korea, when actually they should probably be investing in a foreign country, not Korea. Especially if they own a house in Korea, right? Imagine the stock market goes down in Korea and your house price goes down too, right? Really, you should be investing, if you have a house, own a house in Korea, you should be investing in stocks in another country, okay? So the house price goes down in Korea, Korea has an economic crisis, all very well and good, but you have stocks in the US and the US is going very well. So you only get half the damage, okay? But if you invest all your money in Korea and Korea has a crisis, you lose a lot of money. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. So all this is very connected. So yes. US, US market change and Korea market is also changed. Ah, uh, yes. You mean in the crisis situation? Yes. Korea, is, Korea and the US is highly correlated? Yes. Um, yes, but still not 100%. So you're still better off to put it in the US. Because even if it's only 70%, like we saw US and Japan, just 0.7% correlated, at least you're still not going to lose all your money. Do you understand? So it's still some advantage by investing your money in the, another country. Okay. So that makes it uh, cheaper for the companies to sell their stock. So then let's take a break now for 10 minutes. <laughs> Yes, it's better to invest in the country with the low correlation. <laughs>